Robin is the title that's been given to many of Batman's sidekicks over the years, starting with Dick Grayson to the current day Robin, Damian Wayne. He was the first DC teen sidekick, and one of the most popular in DC Comics, with Robin's introduction to the Batman comic series, the sales went up dramatically, as the fans really connected with the idea of a teen superhero. But as the years went on, Dick Grayson aged and the mantle of Robin was passed on to hero after hero. And in all this time, quite a lot has happened to the many different Robins. And this video is going to go over five times that these Robins have died. Now, to be on this list, the hero must have died and have at one point been a Robin. They don't have to have died wearing the Robin uniform, so long as they once served as a Robin in the Bat family. Number 5. Emperor Joker We start off with the death of Tim Drake, Jason Todd and Dick Grayson, when the Joker was able to get the godlike power of Mixius Middelic and he uses it to wreak havoc on the world, making it in his own image and killing three of the Robins, which at this point was all of them. Of course, later on he lost these powers, thanks to Superman, and the world was put back the way it was, which does take away from the dramatic importance of this death, but it still counts as a Robin death, even if it is the least climactic one on this list. Number 4. Damian Wayne Damian Wayne's death was quite a surprise, because he seemed to be too popular a character to be killed off, but the writers decided that his run in the comics needed to come to an end. His death came about after his mother went pretty insane and decided he needed to die. She put a bounty out on his head and Batman confined him to the Batcave for his own safety. That gives you permission to keep me a prisoner in my own house? It's for your own protection. But when Talia Al Ghul attacked Gotham with an army, Damian Wayne broke out to help his father. And in the process, he had to fight Heretic. Heretic was a clone of Damian Wayne who was engineered to be stronger than Damian is and aged to peak physical condition. He also features in the new 52 movie, Batman Bad Blood. Do I know you? Intimately. And not at all. And personally, I think his character design in the film is much better than his one in the comic book, as his design in the comic book has a really young face and it looks kind of creepy to me. But anyway, Damian fought Heretic and was impaled on the Heretic's sword. It was a pretty good death, all things considered, as he died helping his father and the other Robins and helping to save Gotham City. However, his death did send Bruce Wayne off the deep end a little. Bruce Wayne wanted death on the heretic, however, he was unable to beat the heretic as he was. So instead of fighting him one-on-one -on -one just as he was, he decided to get a strength-increasing mecha bat suit along with injecting himself with the man bat serum and transforming himself into a part man bat as well which along with the mecha suit gave him quite incredible super strength and he was able to defeat Heretic. And he did also manage to stop himself from killing Heretic, but unfortunately he was still killed by Talia Al Ghul after she found him to be lacking as a minion. And of course Damian Wayne didn't stay dead forever and Batman was able to bring him back to life. For the full story on how he died and how he came back to life, check out the links in this video's description. Number 3. Dick Grayson in the Injustice universe, the death of Dick Grayson is a crucial moment, and a huge turning point for Batman, especially towards Damian Wayne, his blood son, as it destroys pretty much any chance of the two having any kind of father-son relationship. You stopped being my son when you killed Dick Grayson. He was my son. Now, technically Dick Grayson was Nightwing when he died, but he was a Robin, and as I said, that's good enough for this list. Now, I have to say that I did think Dick Grayson really got screwed over in this story, his death was just way too simple and really anticlimactic for what he should have been. And again, for the full story, check out the links in this video's description. But basically, Dick Grayson falls over and breaks his neck, dying instantly. Which just isn't the over-the-top cool deaths that we are used to seeing with superheroes, which really is a shame. From the way the video game plays out, it's said that Damian Wayne killed Dick Grayson. But it sounded more like an epic battle between the two, which resulted in Dick Grayson losing. Or it at least sounded like Damian Wayne did intentionally mean to kill Dick Grayson, instead of just accidentally knocking him out and accidentally killing him. And an epic fight between the two of them would have been way better, at least in my opinion. After all, Nightwing has survived much worse injuries than this and been perfectly fine afterwards. And if it wasn't for the fact that his death is that anticlimactic, then this one would have been a lot higher on this list. Fortunately though, Dick Grayson's story didn't end here. He has so far stayed dead, but he has also continued as a hero in the afterlife and became the hero Deadman later on in the series. Uh, again, for the full story on this, check out the links in this video's description. 
Number two, Tim Drake. Tim Drake's death was completely unexpected and very, very painful to read. Tim Drake, along with his fellow Teen Titans, was trapped in the Phantom Zone for years, sitting out pretty much all of the Injustice event, and it seemed as though he was going to stay in the Phantom Zone forever. But fortunately, Batman was able to rescue the Teen Titans and bring them back home. And it's actually a very touching moment when the two are reunited, which is rare in the Injustice universe. And then in a style reminiscent of Game of Thrones, they kill off Tim Drake with a laser blast through the heart from General Zod. It's tragic and horrible, and I really wish it hadn't happened, as I would have loved for Tim Drake to have become Batman's Robin once more, because he really does need a Robin in the Injustice universe, it's just not right him being on his own. But because of how painful this death was to watch, it is a powerful and extremely memorable moment in the Injustice universe, and one of the best Robin deaths that we've ever had. And it hit Batman hard, as the Injustice universe is pretty grim for Batman for the most part. You coward. We are at war with these animals. You think you're better than him? You let the Joker keep on killing. You couldn't save Lois or Jason or anyone. And him getting Tim Drake back was a light in the darkness. And I think the Batman felt the full force of that light and that he felt it was a turning point for him in the Injustice universe and that things were finally going to change and the world was going to be improved. And then Tim Drake died right in front of him and there was absolutely nothing that he could do. It crushed Batman and he wanted blood for what General Zod had done, and so he summoned his Batsuit, which was clearly made to fight Superman, and proceeded to beat General Zod with all the fury he could. He didn't kill General Zod, though if the fight had continued it would have been interesting to see if he would have crossed that line, but the choice was taken away from him, as the Amazo android landed and ripped off General Zod's head with ease, and then flew off. And though him dying was what he deserved, it didn't change the fact that Tim Drake was dead who, as far as Batman knows at this point, is really the last Robin he had left, as Damian Wayne and him still aren't talking. And of course, he doesn't know that Jason Todd has come back from the dead. And speaking of Jason Todd, number one, Jason Todd. The death of Jason Todd was an incredible moment in comic book history. For the first time, DC let fans vote in to control a story, and the fans voted for Jason Todd's death. For the full story, check out the links in this video's description. But after Jason Todd was voted off, he was beaten severely with a crowbar by the Joker and then murdered in an explosion. And as good as the comic is, it was improved upon greatly in the film Batman Under the Red Hood, which was the best animated film DC ever made and the second most profitable. So far, it's managed to make a little over $11.5 million. And in case you're wondering, the highest grossing DC animated film is Superman Doomsday, which has made around $12.5 million. Of course, those amounts will increase as the future goes on, as sales will grow up. But as of today, in 2018, that's how much it's estimated that they've made. I couldn't actually find out the exact budget, but it wouldn't have been more than a few million dollars, because that's pretty much all these companies spend on those type of animated films. Though if anyone does actually know the exact amount it costs to make, please let us know in the comments. Of course, Jason Todd didn't stay dead. In the movie, he was resurrected by Rachel Ghoul using a Lazarus pit. Rachel Ghoul did this because he felt that he had wronged Batman by killing his son. Although he was still killed by the Joker in the movie, it was Rachel Ghoul that had set the Joker upon them. I'm afraid I overestimated my ability to control the Joker, just as I underestimated his madness. And in the comics, his return was a little bit different. Superboy Prime, who is a Superboy from another reality, was trapped with a group of other alternate reality characters, including an alternate Lex Luthor and an alternate Superman. But anyway, Superboy broke through from where they all were into our reality by punching his way through the reality wall, and this rupture of the universe created ripples in reality, and one of these ripples resurrected Jason Todd. And though Jason Todd was now alive again, nothing in time had actually been changed. The entire universe's timeline unfolded in pretty much the same way. The only real difference was that Jason Todd suddenly went from being dead to being alive. And it's easy to see why they changed this for the movie, as the Lazarus Pit is a lot easier to explain to an audience, as this Superboy Prime death is a bit more involved when it comes to explaining, and may have been a bit too out there for some people to accept. Now the Red Hood is one of my favourite characters in the Bat family, and I'm sure a lot of people feel the same towards him, as he's quite a compelling character, and has a great origin story. And I'm sure that no one is surprised that his death is the number one Robin death. After all, he was the first true death of any Robin, and they did a great job in ending him. Jason. 
There are some other Robin deaths that do deserve a mention though. In the new Rebirth comics, Tim Drake sacrifices himself defending one of the Bat Family bases from an army bent on its destruction. He was believed by everyone to be dead, but it was later revealed that he hadn't actually died. At the last second, he was teleported away by the mysterious Oz, so this wasn't a Robin death, but it was very close. And the rest of the universe and the Bat Family did think that Tim Drake was dead. There was also the death of Stephanie Brown, also known as Spoiler, who was dating Tim Drake. Though she had perhaps the shortest tenure as a Robin, and she was fired very quickly by Batman as she refused to follow some of his orders. She then decided to prove herself by enacting one of Batman's secret plans, which involved instigating a gang war between supervillains in Gotham. However, what she didn't know was that it was supposed to be controlled by Matches Malone, who was of course Batman's undercover disguise. Get your mitts off me. The day I need a Dane's help. And without matches there as the safety net to control it, Stephanie Brown was captured by, tortured, and finally killed by the Black Mask. She did manage to escape, but the wounds he had inflicted eventually killed her. However, this was later retconned, and it turned out that the Dr. Leslie Tompkins, who originally hadn't been able to save her life, had actually been lying, and she had been able to save Stephanie Brown's life by giving her emergency medical aid, and had been hiding her since that day in order to protect her. Though of course, she now came back to the life of the Bat Family. And in the game Batman Arkham Knight, the Joker filmed himself shooting and killing the Jason Todd version of Robin. It's Never could stand a tattletale. That's why I like to work alone. And Batman, after watching this video that the Joker had sent him, believed that Jason Todd was actually dead. But it was later revealed that he had survived the shot and spent a year and a half in the abandoned wing of the Arkham Asylum being tortured by the Joker. Joker sent me the film. I saw him kill you. Don't you dare lie to me! How long did you wait before replacing me, huh? A month? A week? I trusted you! And you just left me to die! It's not revealed how Jason Todd actually got away, but he did eventually manage to break free and return to Gotham under the guise of the Arkham Knight to kill Batman, as he blamed him for what the Joker had done to him. And if you're wondering why he didn't just kill the Joker, in this version of the DC Universe, the Joker was already dead at this point. <laughs> Though of course, Jason Todd was eventually able to see the light and realise the truth, that it wasn't really Batman's fault that he had died. Yes, he should have looked into it better and made sure that he was actually dead, and that was major negligence on his part, but Jason Todd was eventually able to forgive Batman and join his side and help him to take down Scarecrow. There are also the deaths that occur in the video game Batman Arkham VR. In the video game, Batman is investigating the disappearance of Nightwing, and this disappearance turns out to be a murder investigation, as Nightwing has been killed. Beaten to death. Why wasn't I here? Why didn't I stop it? And then while investigating this, Tim Drake is captured and then killed by Killer Croc. And it turns out that both Tim Drake being captured and Nightwing's death were orchestrated by Batman. This is of course a little bit confusing, but it turns out that Batman has been taken over by the Joker. And then it turns out this entire game was actually a dream, and neither Tim Drake nor Nightwing are dead. The dream, or rather the nightmare, occurs because Batman is terrified that he's turning into the Joker, because in the game Batman Arkham Knight, he has some sort of venom in his veins that is turning him into the Joker. Untreated, the blood's gestated too long. It's altering them. They're becoming... Joker. My God. And this VR game is set before that. To be honest, it's kind of a cop out by the writers because it looks like it's actually going to be quite interesting. And then they go with the most cliched ending ever. It was all just a dream. But it is still kind of fun to play, even though everything in it ends up being pointless. And the ending is needlessly confusing because if you haven't actually played the Arkham Knight game, you will have no idea what's happening. I know why you're here. Your little buddy! Shy kicked the bucket, didn't he? 
And finally, Dick Grayson faked his death after the world thought he had died during the DC Universe's event, Forever Evil. During this story arc, his secret identity was revealed to the world, and he was thought to be killed by the supervillains. And originally, he didn't actually want to stay as a dead man, but Batman convinced him to go undercover to investigate Spiral for him. And even though Dick Grayson wanted to tell the rest of the Bat family, at the very least, as he didn't want to put any of them through all that guilt, Batman was able to convince him that the only way this plan would work was if only the two of them knew that he was alive. Now, personally, I think this was unnecessary, and they could have at the very least told the Bat family where he was, because they could have quite easily told at the very least Tim Drake, Damian Wayne, Batgirl, and Alfred that he was still alive, because they were the ones who felt at the worst, and later on they would all resent him for doing this, and in my opinion, they're actually quite justified in resenting him for this, because like I say, there was no real reason not to tell them. It was really just to create secrets in the Bat family so they could create dramatic tension, which is fine to have dramatic tension as it could be quite entertaining, but this was just unnecessary. And that is the five best deaths of the Robins, and the best times that the Robins faked their deaths, or had someone fake their death for them. Now personally I think my favourite death is definitely the Jason Todd death, because as I said, it did give us the Batman Under the Red Hood film, which is the best DC animated movie ever made, and I absolutely love it and fully recommend watching it. But what is your favourite Robin death? And which fake death is your favourite as well? Be sure to let us know in the comments, and I'd just like to say a quick thank you to those who made this video possible by donating to the Needle Mouse Productions page on Patreon. Patreon is a crowdfunding site that's helping us to bring you more videos each week and to raise funds for adapting comic book stories into short animated films. If you're interested in donating or just want to find out more, a link is in this video's description. And as always, thanks for watching and feel free to subscribe, share, like and comment.